Hello and welcome here. It's that time again. Today you will be joining me for my monthly reading wrap up for the month of May. I decided to do the format a little bit different from how I normally do and so I decided to document the books that I read as I finished them this month instead of just at the end. So you'll see me in different places, uh, different moods <laughs> throughout the month. I just wanted to try something a little bit different. Let me know what you think and we will check in at the end with some final thoughts. Cheers! Welcome back. So the first book I've read is Salman Rushdie's new release called Victory City that weaves parts of India's actual history as well as many magical and fantastical elements. It's written as the translation of a sweeping epic tale from the mouth of a poet and prophetess called Pampa Kampana and is set in 14th century India. The main character that we follow in the book is Pampa Kampana. We meet her at the age of about eight where after the traumatic death of her mother, her body is used as a vessel by the goddess Parvati and this grants Pampa Kampana many supernatural abilities and a very extended lifespan. Parvati also sets her a task or two. One is to create a city and the other is to reorder it almost so that women act as equals in a patriarchal world. Pampa Kampana achieves this as she sows the city literally from seeds and names it Bisnaka or Bisnaka which literally translates to Victory City. This is a story about the rise and fall of empires and legacies, as well as the steadfastness of language throughout shifting allegiances, battles, and different rulers. This book was um, enjoyable but dense. It's definitely not a relaxing read. It maintains much of its mythological or kind of legendary storytelling aspects through the density of language. For example, in every paragraph there are probably at least seven to ten different names and places that are mentioned. Everyone is always by their full name, which means that it can feel quite dense to get through. I picked this up thinking it would be more in the fantasy sci-fi realm and it definitely did adhere to that but it definitely also read more like a literary historical fiction which isn't a bad thing, I also love that genre so it was nice to see the two styles kind of melded together. Salman Rushdie's writing is very beautiful, there's a reason why he is famed for his works. It feels like an achievement to have read this. Is it my favourite book I've read this year? No, but I would probably pick up another one of his books after reading this and if these sort of ideas are things that you also look for then give it a go and let me know how you get on. Hi, I'm back and I just finished my uh, second book of May. Um, I've just finished The Descent of Man by Grayson Perry. This was a non-fiction book that interrogated the idea of masculinity. It discusses how feminism benefits or could benefit men and how the patriarchy impacts men too. For those who don't know, Grayson Perry is an artist. He's known for his ceramics and his tapestries, but also very well known for his kind of insights into the contemporary art scene. And he's also well known for his cross-dressing, which he unpacks a little bit in the book too. But generally throughout the book, he does use just personal anecdotes anyway, which is very enjoyable. Grayson has a slightly cutting, very blunt, but incredible sense of wit and humour, and that definitely comes out through the writing in the book. I really wanted to read this book because I've spent a lot of time reading and talking about feminism and uh, gender equality, but I realised that I have actually not spent that much time reading it from a male perspective. Uh, Grayson covers a lot of different topics within this, um, power, physical appearance, vulnerability, uh, emotion, sexuality, a whole host of different topics and things that affect everyone. So this was actually really insightful. It is a heavy subject matter but Grayson's personality really lifts it. He's funny and honest and he approaches these topics and this subject with a lot of compassion and honesty um, and I have just finished listening to this um, as an audiobook and I really really liked that as a medium. It kind of feels more like you've asked a friend for their thoughts on the topic rather than that you're listening to a book with a manifesto at the end and yeah like if you're also curious I would definitely recommend it and see how you get on with it. And that's book two. I've finished my 
third book. Let me grab it. I just finished The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, so let me sit down and tell you everything. This is a classic piece of children's English literature originally written in the 1900s. We start the book learning about a little girl called Mary Lennox, born to wealthy parents in India. She is pretty neglected and is predominantly cared for servants. The cholera outbreak means that she is left orphaned and is discovered by British soldiers in the abandoned house. All of the servants have left and her parents have passed away. She's sent to her uncle Craven's house in Yorkshire where she continues to be super rude, bleak and contrary until she becomes interested in a secret garden on the grounds that belongs to her uncle's uh, late wife. And she soon begins to soften up as she befriends a maid called Martha, Martha's brother Dickon, uh, a gardener called Ben Weatherstaff, and um, a very friendly little Robin. Throughout her time in the house, she also begins to hear some crying coming from somewhere. And she discovers that it is her cousin called Colin. Colin is described as an invalid and also as a very petulant child. They do end up becoming friends. They all work together, her, Colin and Dickon, to restore the secret garden to its former glory. And also to help Colin and both Mary find purpose. It's a pastoral story about children finding friendship and comfort in nature and in each other's company. Unfortunately quite a lot of the language is really outdated now and not politically correct at all, specifically in regards to when they are talking about people from India, people of colour and I would also say maybe when they're talking about Colin it could be considered quite ableist language now. I was just honestly in the mood to read something light-hearted. I never read this book as a child and I just wanted something really low stakes that would like get me in the mood for the spring and the summer, which this did. Frances Hodgson Burnett writes really vividly about the natural world and gardens and the auction moors. So it's very inviting. It is a classic children's book, so it delivered what I wanted it to. Um, and this is also just a reminder that children's books are for everyone. I'd highly recommend either revisiting a childhood favourite or picking up a book that you never got a chance to get to as a kid. They're still a lot of fun. Sometimes you might have to take the language with a pinch of salt, but the stories are usually quite heartwarming and might just be exactly what you need. Also apologies about all of the noise which started immediately as I came onto the balcony. So see you at the next one. I'm just popping here for a very brief summary and overview of the fourth book that I have read. It was an audiobook this time and it is Gratitude by Dr. Oliver Sacks. It is a essay or a series of meditations on a life well lived. The printed copy I believe is about 50 pages long but this one was just over half an hour as an audiobook and it expresses his thoughts and feelings about the gratefulness and contentedness that he has or had, he has now passed, with the life that he lived. As well as meditating on growing old, being diagnosed with a terminal cancer, and just looking death in the face. It's such a heartfelt and comforting, precious work and a really lovely thing to read. Depending on the read that you're in, you might find it quite moving. There's one of the quotes that he says, which I will just grab because I would really like to share it with you. Above all, I have been a sentient being, a thinking animal on this beautiful planet. And that in itself has been an enormous privilege and adventure. So yeah, that was a very nice, very short, very meaningful contribution to this month's reading. I have my pan au chocolat and my coffee and I'm ready to begin, I think. The book that I have just finished, I have an obscene amount of thoughts about. <laughs> I finished this yesterday and it's taken me until now to gather myself, to ground myself, mostly. I, it was absolutely phenomenal. I'm so excited to share it. The Dance Tree by Kiran Millwood Hargrave. This is a brand new historical fiction. It's set in the 16th century in Strasbourg, which at the time was under German occupation or German rule. The summer is one of the hottest recorded. Poverty is everywhere and fear of God and government presides over everything. 
The book opens with one woman. Completely at the end of her tether, she relinquishes her mind and her body to dancing. This starts a dance plague which descends across the city. Cut to our protagonist, Lisbeth. Lisbeth is a heavily pregnant wife and bee farmer. She has suffered great, great loss in the form of her mother's suicide and in a dozen miscarriages. Other characters that we are very soon introduced to are Ida, a picture-perfect wife and mother married to a tyrant of a husband, and Nethe or Agnethe, a recently returned penitent who was exiled for unknown sins and crimes to a monastery in the mountains. There is great personal and political upheaval throughout this novel, told to us through absolutely stunning writing and lots of beekeeping metaphors. <laughs> this is a story about forbidden and tender love, family and sacrifice, and grief, power and endurance. This book was so gripping, I absolutely flew through it. It's not always the most pleasant read, but it is worth every single second. I feel very strongly about that. <laughs> the characters are so well-rounded and fully fleshed out and realised, and the plot does build a lot of tension. However, it is a mostly character-driven book. It's set in the summertime of 15, 18 in Strasbourg, as I said, and the way that the heat and the summer sun, this oppressive, visceral thing, God, it was so, so good. I'm so excited to read more from this author. I just think it's honestly one of the best books I read for a really long time. I need a pan of chocolate break. Okay. I'm back again. <laughs> the book I'm just gonna quickly talk about is The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. This was another book that I listened to as an audiobook. Tell me you got wireless headphones without telling me you got wireless headphones. Game changing. This was a kind of series of reflections and meditations and just encouragement by Matt Haig. It really is in the title, The Comfort Book. Incredibly comforting. I listened to it on the way like to and from work. I listened to it in the mornings. It's just really relaxing and nice. And it's just nice to have reminders like that sometimes. I definitely recommend it to people who are having a tough mental health spell or just a tough time in general at the moment. But similarly, it's just good reminders, nice reminders, and I don't think you can ever have too many of those. So I feel like wherever you are on your mental health journey, whether you're feeling great or not so great, you might get something out of this. I didn't go into this with really high expectations for some reason, but it's one of those books that's it's not a measure of whether it's good or bad, it's just, it just is, and I think maybe that reflects the whole content of the book, that we are okay just as we are, we're just meant to exist. I don't think there's much else to say about it, other than that it was definitely comforting and I would recommend it to many different people. Really wholesome and lovely and a good time, yeah. So it looks like you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations! I really enjoyed the majority of my reading choices for the month and I really enjoyed the new style of filming. It's a bit less pressure, if nothing else, to try and remember what every single book was about at the end of the month. I have a pile of books on the go at the moment that I didn't get quite round to finishing but you'll have to join me in my next month's reading wrap-up to find out more about that. Thank you so much again for choosing to spend time with me. It means a lot that people keep coming back to these videos and um, thank you so much anyone who's messaged me or left a comment letting me know that. It's really nice and it makes my day. I hope that wherever you are you're keeping safe and well and I will see you soon in another